Mr. Chairman, as Singapore settles into phase three and vaccinations are underway, we seek to sustain the momentum for recovery and emerge stronger post-COVID-19. Earlier, Minister Chan, Second Minister Tan and Moss Tan spoke about our forward-looking agenda and reiterated MTI's commitment to help our enterprises emerge stronger from this crisis. So let me now elaborate on our near-term priorities ahead. SMEs will continue to play a pivotal role in the recovery of our economy. They make up 99% of our enterprises, of our companies, and contribute 72% of employment. To support the SME's recovery and growth, we will strengthen our business ecosystem in partnership with companies and trade associations and chambers, TACs. Let me share how the government will co-create the future roadmap with SMEs and boost our support for digitalization as urged by Mr. Sean Huang and Ms. Jessica Tan. I meet with the heartland merchants regularly. Several shopkeepers indicated their interest to go digital and those who were online were keen to do more. They asked for more resources and support to innovate. This positive attitude and readiness to transform is commendable and we will pull out all stops to rally behind our SMEs, our heartland merchants. The flagship Heartlands Go Digital program provides specific support to equip our heartland shops with up-to-date IT knowledge, e-payment options and digital solutions. It aims to revitalize heartland shops and future-proof these businesses with solutions ranging from visual merchandising in stores to local placemaking activities and digital marketing. This program is led by the Heartlands Digitalization and Revitalization Committee, co-chaired by SMS Man and myself. Reflecting a collaborative and most importantly, an enterprise-centric approach, the committee comprises FMAS, Federation of Merchants Association, Singapore, Heartlands Enterprise Centre, Singapore, HECS, and government agencies like ESG, STB, GovTech, IMDA, and HDB. To wrap up the speed of adoption, close to 200 digital ambassadors and business advisors have been on the ground reaching out to some 20,000 Heartland Enterprises. They share with the shopkeepers about the benefits of digitalization and provide step-by-step -step guidance on how to go digital. As of February 2021, we have engaged more than 85% of these Heartland shops and are on track to meet our target this month. Interestingly, over the last one year, we are seeing more second-generation and third-generation family heartland businesses leveraging on available government programs to transform their business by going digital. Allow me to share one interesting example. Petit Blooms, they are a florist business in Tegwai, run by a mother and son team, recently made the leap to e-payments because they wanted to capture the growing number of e-savvy customers. And today, within a short span of time, up to 25% of their sales use e-payments, and revenue within a short span of time has gone up by 10% in the first three months of going digital. Patik Blooms is also now on Shopee. Check them out. Thanks to the Heartlands Go Digital program, the shop has diversified its revenue streams and enhanced its online visibility, resulting in more business. Mr. Chairman, while we reposition our SMEs for growth through digitalization and innovation, it is equally important to extend our support for capability development and cash flow management. Mr. Derek Goh and Mr. Jorak Nyam have, can be assured that we have many, many programs that boost the productivity of SMEs and make them more competitive and attractive to Singaporeans. In particular, the PSG Productivity Solutions Grant that was introduced in 2018 continues to assist businesses in their transformation journey and provide them with support for IT solutions and equipment as well as consultancy services. Since then, more than 19,000 SMEs have adopted IT solutions and equipment to get ahead. And the top sectors for PSG adoption include retail, building and construction, wholesale trade, food services and services sector. 
To help more enterprises transform, we are extending PSG's enhanced maximum support level of up to 80% till 31st March 2022. We hope this will encourage more SMEs to come on board, transform and gear up for economic recovery. The journey to transformation, though exciting, can be tough too. And this is why we have 11, 11 dedicated SME centres providing one-stop assistance for SMEs island-wide. The centres on-site business advisors partner our SMEs to guide them in their capability development and growth. Mr. Sean Huang, Mr. Derek Goh, and Mr. Desmond Chu will be delighted to know that the SME centres will begin piloting specialised advisory services to support enterprises in specific areas such as digitalisation and financing. For example, when an SME wishes to expand but lacks the funds, the SME centre's specialist advisor will help to assess the company's financial health and recommend the appropriate financing model and available financing instruments. Then, the specialist advisor then guides the business owner and the SME on how to strengthen his or her loan applications and will then also provide the link up uh, between the SME and the relevant banks for their loan application. Last year, the SME centres assisted over 32,000 SMEs and more are expected to benefit from the new services. So we urge SMEs to tap the advice and resources available at our 11 SME centres. We want to help SMEs to build up their capabilities and workforce so that they can raise their productivity and scale up their business. I would like to assure Mr. Gerald Yam that the government is constantly looking at how we can assist SMEs to attract more local talents. The Global Ready Talent Programme helps SMEs and enterprises build up their talent pipeline by exposing more Singaporeans to internship and overseas work opportunities. This allows our SMEs to discover potential employees and also provide our students with a better appreciation of our SMEs. Mr Chairman, we share Ms Jessica Tan's view that government schemes should be streamlined and made more accessible to businesses. With easier and smoother government transactions, we hope business costs will be reduced. This is why we have rolled out Go Business Gov Assist, a portal that consolidates all available government assistance onto one platform. Since its launch last August, it has received over 230,000 unique visits. This year, we will be introducing an online guided journey on the Go Business platform to help businesses start faster and start right. It will provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a business as well as recommend the suitable business structure and suggest relevant resources. In addition, Go Business Platform will have a function to assist our businesses to make checks or changes regarding premise use. This will allow companies to quickly check, identify the right governing authority and provide information on the approved uses of rental or purchase commercial premises. While we gear up for an economic recovery, we are also mindful of the ongoing challenges in our economy. To navigate the uncertainties, we need all hands on deck. This is the time for our TACs, because our TACs are most needed to help their members overcome difficulties and capture new opportunities. In my recent engagements with the various TACs, I saw how they led their members to build core capabilities and pivot to other business models. For example, the SFIC, Singapore Furniture Industry Council's fifth membership assistance scheme benefited over 70 companies with training, opportunities in design innovation and digital capability development. It has also introduced Creative Space, which is a new B2B e-sourcing and marketing platform that is first of its kind in Asia. I graced the launch in October last year and saw how Creative Space helped 20 local brands, including Commune, Private, Commune Lifestyle Private Limited, to break new ground and expand their reach to areas like in Europe. 
I'm delighted to hear that Commune Lifestyle's e-commerce sales has doubled in the last 10 months. TAC also will play an important role in facilitating greater collaborations between enterprises. We are aligned with Mr. Edward Chia's views on supporting more business collaborations. Second Minister Tan Si Leng has shared about how the government will continue to support collaborative projects through schemes such as PACT. Mr. Edward Chia and Mr. Derek Goh will be pleased to know that the government will work more closely with our industry partners such as TACs to upgrade their core capability. As TACs continue to play their role of supporting industry transformation and business growth, they will have to attract, retain and develop the right talent. Recognising this need, a TAC competency framework led by SCCI Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, with the support from SBF, Singapore Business Federation, ESG and SSG, SkillsFuture Singapore, will be developed. This is the first time a competency framework is being created for TACs. Developed in consultation with the TACs, the framework will identify existing gaps and relevant skills required by the TAC secretariats and their leaders. Suitable programs will then be developed to upgrade and build the skill sets of the TAC sector. This competency framework is expected to be ready in third quarter this year, and we strongly encourage our TACs to adopt it to upskill their staff. Mr. Chairman, in Mandarin, please. Mr. Chairman, the company is the first company of the country. The company is the first company of the country. It is the 为更好地扶持中小、微型企业和促进经济的持续复苏，政府将推出以下三项的新措施。首先，中小企业中心将扩展现有的服务范围，为企业提供融资和推进数码化的专项咨询服务。具体的来说，那些在融资方面有疑问